USS Roper was closing in fast after U-85. The crew of the German submarine surfaced to disappear at top speed, desperate to survive the night of April 13th, 1942. Little did the submariners know that USS Roper had radar to track them down no matter where they went. Developed during World War I, Roper had been updated. The old but reliable US Navy Wix-class destroyer would not relent. As U-85 broke the waves in the pitch black darkness, his captain felt relieved, thinking they'd make it out of the North Carolina coast. Suddenly, Roper's searchlights caught onto them. The submariners rushed to the deck gun, risking their lives as the submarine prepared to crash dive before a lethal salvo sank it. The time had come for one last stand between an old destroyer and a modern Kriegsmarine submarine. The U.S. Navy Wix-class destroyer was developed and built between 1917 and 1919 when the country declared war against the Prussian Empire and joined the global conflict raging on in Europe. The Navy commissioned 111 vessels of the class, of which few saw actual combat operations during World War I. The destroyer class was named after Admiral Lambert Wix, an officer during the American Revolutionary War. The destroyer design was developed to tackle the rising naval menace of submarines, providing the ultimate asset for fleet defense and convoy escort. In addition, the U.S. Navy sought to develop a design that had great speed and was easy to mass produce. The vessel's most recognizable features were its four smokestacks and flush deck. The Wix class had a displacement of 1,250 tons, a length of 315 feet, a beam of 30 feet, and a draft of 9 feet. Power and propulsion comprised four oil-fired boilers driving geared steam turbines, generating around 24,000 shaft horsepower. The swift wicks could achieve speeds of up to 35 knots. Armament was almost identical to the Caldwell-class vessels, including four 4-inch 50-caliber guns employed in most Navy ships with flush deck designs. In addition, Wicks destroyers were armed with 12 21-inch torpedo tubes to launch the powerful Mark 8 torpedo and depth charge racks for anti-submarine warfare. The secondary armament comprised a single 3-inch 23-caliber anti-aircraft gun located aft of the stern 4-inch gun. These destroyers became the backbone of the U.S. Navy's destroyer force before the beginning of World War II. Plenty of the Wix-class destroyers would make their way to the British Royal Navy as part of the cooperation agreement signed with the U.S. in exchange for military bases. As part of the Destroyers for Bases deal signed on September 2, 1940, over 50 Wix, Caldwell, and Clemson-class destroyers were transferred to the British to fend off the German Kriegsmarine. The Wix-class destroyers that remained under U.S. Navy command were dispatched for combat once America joined the global conflict following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Such was the case of USS Roper, laid down in March 1918 by William Cramp and Sons of Philadelphia. Although she did not see any combat during World War I, USS Roper patrolled the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, visiting locations such as Ponta Delgada, Gibraltar, and Malta in 1919. While the victorious nations negotiated with the defeated, USS Roper became part of the Peace Commission and Relief Committee, delivering mail and passengers to and from Constantinople, Novorossiysk, and other cities in the region. Once the U.S. forces operating in Russia as part of the polar bear expedition that provided military aid to the Russian whites fighting the communists led by Lenin were withdrawn, USS Roper returned to the continental United States. Months later, she made her way to the Panama Canal and reached the Philippines to patrol the South China Sea. After her tour in the Pacific, USS Roper returned to San Diego, California and was decommissioned in December 1922. Nonetheless, as tensions rose with the Empire of Japan following its aggressive expansion in the Pacific, the old and reliable Wix-class destroyer was recommissioned in March 1930 and dispatched to the Pacific. USS Roper patrolled American continental waters from Alaska to Panama until 1937, when she transitioned to the Atlantic Fleet. When World War II broke out in September 1939, USS Roper began conducting neutrality patrols in the Atlantic. Before the U.S. entry into the global conflict, the United Kingdom and its colonies stood alone against the might of the German Third Reich. The Battle of the Atlantic initiated the clash between the Royal Navy and the German Kriegsmarine. In the case of the Kriegsmarine, the U-boat menace became Germany's best attempt 
at subjugating the British Isles, completely isolating the Britons from foreign supplies, especially those that came from the neutral United States. The ferocious German submarines took the world by storm with their aggressive and effective naval operations during the early years of the war. Just like they had done during the previous global conflict, the Germans had once again found a way to overcome their numerical inferiority with submarine warfare. The success of the Kriegsmarine submarine wolf packs and the impressive supplies they sank led Germany to coin the period the first happy time, which lasted from July to October 1940. During this period, the German submariners sank over 1.5 million tons of Allied shipping, crippling Britain from foreign help and greatly troubling the Admiralty about the nation's fate, especially British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. He would go as far as to admit during the post-war that he was truly nervous about the United Kingdom's defeat during the uncertain period of the Battle of Britain and the first happy time. Once Germany declared war against the United States following Japan's Pearl Harbor attack, the wolf packs ventured further into the vast Atlantic Ocean, descending upon the east coast of the United States, from New England and the first colonies down to the state of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. This led to the second happy time, which became part of Operation Paukenschlag, or drumbeat. The German sailors ravaged the ocean, sinking over 3.1 million tons worth of supplies and sending them to the depths between January and August 1942, further limiting the U.S. aid to Great Britain. The top brass of the U.S. Navy learned the hard way about the real threat posed by the lone hunters that roamed near the major ports of the East Coast. From obligated blackouts in ports and coastal cities to adopting the convoy system, the U.S. Navy began to adopt measures to eliminate the U-boat arm. With the deployment of more U.S. Navy assets and the adoption of the convoy system, the effectiveness of the daunting wolf packs diminished steadily. One of the multiple German submarines that patrolled the East Coast was U-85, a Type 7B submarine. First ordered in June 1938, U-85 was laid down in December 1939, launched in April 1941, and commissioned for the Atlantic in June 1941. As the successor of the Type 7A submarine, U-85 was larger, heavier, and more effective for commerce raiding. U-85 displaced over 740 tons when serviced and 840 long tons when fully submerged. She had a length of 66.5 meters, a beam of 6.2 meters, and a draft of almost 5 meters. Type 7B submarines were powered by two Mann M6 V4046 four-stroke six-cylinder supercharged diesel engines that produced over 3,200 metric horsepower for use when surfaced, allowing her to reach a top speed of around 20 miles per hour. For submerged operations, U-85 employed two BBC GGUB 728 double-acting electric motors that produced 750 metric horsepower and provided her with a top speed of 9 miles per hour. Due to U-85's pressure hull of 48 meters, she could operate at depths of up to 230 meters. The submarine was armed with five 21-inch torpedo tubes, four at the bow and one at the stern. She could carry either 14 torpedoes or 26 mines. Secondary armament comprised one 0.79-inch C-30 anti-aircraft gun and one 346-inch deck gun with over 200 rounds. The submariners of U-85 left Trondheim, Norway in late August 1941 for her first patrol. Days later, on September 10th, she sank her first vessel, Thistle Glen, off the coast of Cape Farewell, Greenland. No more ships were hunted and U-85 docked at the U-boat pens of San Nazaire in late September 1941. After a short break, U-85 left port for her second patrol, which was uneventful. The submarine's third patrol fared better. Three days into the patrol, U-85 pursued the Empire Fusilier for over seven hours before sinking her off the coast of St. John's, Newfoundland on February 9, 1942. In March 1942, U-85 departed for the Atlantic and sank the Norwegian freighter Christian Knudsen off the coast of New Jersey on April 10, 1942, prompting the U.S. Navy to search the region to hunt down enemy U-boats. USS Roper was one of them. U-85's hunting operation across the East Coast continued. The crew was eager to get a fourth vessel, but the U.S. Navy's fleet already heavily patrolled her area. During midnight on April 13, 1942, U-85 was looking for easy prey 
close to the Bodie Island Lighthouse on the Outer Banks of North Carolina when she was detected by USS Roper. The American destroyer, employing a British Type 286 radar, detected U-85 at a distance of over 2,800 yards. Visibility was almost zero, but the radar guided the destroyer through the vast darkness of the ocean. A swift pursuit followed. Suddenly, when the target was within visual range, the sailors from USS Roper turned their lights to identify the threat. U-85's commander, realizing his cover was blown and there was no way to overcome the destroyer, fled as fast as possible to avoid depth charges. The only way to do that was to flee on the surface to achieve maximum speed. Taking his chances, the submariner opted for this choice after firing one torpedo from the stern tube to keep USS Roper at bay. The torpedo was fired at over 700 yards, but USS Roper managed to dodge it and continue the pursuit. At 300 yards, U-85 made a sharp turn to starboard to avoid the American vessel and continue its retreat. Still, the submariners were caught in the destroyer's searchlight beam. Realizing what was about to happen, the German sailors rushed to man their 88mm deck gun and fire at Roper. But there was little that could be done. Roper reacted faster and opened fire against the submariners. Seconds later, the three-inch shell struck U-85. The U-boat crash-dived in a last effort to flee, but USS Roper quickly dropped a spread of 11 depth charges, finishing off the German submarine. During the hours that followed, no attempt was made to rescue the German sailors who were spotted asking for help in the water. Roper's lieutenant commander, Hamilton Howe, was concerned with the attack from another U-boat, despite none being spotted on the radar. At daylight, a PBY Catalina flying boat spotted over 30 deceased German soldiers floating in the water. They were recovered and buried in the Hampton National Cemetery in Hampton, Virginia. For their actions, Commander Howe received the Navy Cross for the sinking of U-85, turning USS Roper into the first American vessel to sink a German submarine during World War II. Today, submarine U-85 lies at less than 100 feet of water. Its hatch is displayed at the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum in Hatteras, North Carolina. Casual divers have found the resting place of U-85 as an attractive location to see a relic of the distant past. The secret Enigma machine carried by the submarines was extracted in 2003 and displayed at the Museum of Hatteras after approval from the German government. The resting place of the submarine was registered on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places in 2015.